The full 12-page report, An Independent Investigation into the Sexual Misconduct of the Late Ravi Zacharias, just came out. Ravi was very influential in the Christian community and especially in the apologetic space. This is a guy who, if you googled uh, what is apologetics on YouTube, his video would come out as number one. So people were shocked and rightfully disgusted when they read the report that showed evidence that Ravi had been living a double life, that he was in fact a sexual predator. Even though I've never done a reaction video like this before, after I read through the 12-page report and saw the statement by RZIM, uh, I really felt like I had to say something. I'm a Christian man who works in the apologetic space, and in this community, Ravi was held up as one of the few minorities to have a platform in this space. I've listed his books as recommended resources in my apologetic syllabi, in my syllabi for uh, world religion classes that I teach, and so I really felt like I did have to say something. One of my students even said that she looked up to him for how wise he was and how godly he was, and her emotions have been all over the place since she read this report. In this video, I'll share my response to the full report, and there's five things that I want to say about it. First, sexual immorality is always wrong. When Ravi abused women, when he tried to cover it up, he was heaping sin on top of sin. And it was all the more evil that he tried to talk about the whole thing and couch it in religious language. You don't have to be a Christian to understand that these things are objectively wrong, and there's no excusing it. There's no explaining it away. So please pray for the victims. Please pray for the family members that have been affected, including Ravi's family. Second, don't let your faith be shaken by this. Ultimately, we trust in Jesus, not in Christian celebrities. Imagine if your mail carrier was having an affair. Does that mean that the letter you got from your mom is full of lies? Just because somebody might butcher a beautiful piece of music on the piano because they're just not any good at the piano, how does that reflect on the composer? The truth of Christianity is based on Jesus himself. Still, what Ravi did does affect our Christian witness. That's why I'm so thankful for the pastors, the missionaries, the Christian leaders, and other teachers who are living for God, who are living right, who are staying faithful to God, even if you may never see them show up on the news. Third, ultimately, it is God who saved you. You might struggle with doubts about the faith, especially if Ravi's work played some role in your spiritual journey. But if you've ever moved closer to God through something that you heard or read that Ravi Zacharias may have said or written, know that it was God himself who persuaded you that Christianity was true, who convicted your heart and brought you closer to the gospel. Ultimately, it's God himself who saved you. If you're watching this, I want to know how you're feeling. So please let me know how you're processing all of this in the comments below. Fourth, truth matters, but loving people matters too. You know, somebody once asked Ravi, why does God not stop rapists? You want to know what he said? He said that freedom is indispensable to love. That's true. He also said that God's highest goal for us was that we would love him with all our heart and that we would love our neighbors as ourselves. That's also true. But Ravi did not choose to use his free will in a good way. And Jesus was not afraid to call out religious hypocrites in his day. When we represent Jesus, what we do behind closed doors matters. When there are no studio staff, when there are no cameras on, how do we treat people? That's important. Fifth, I'm talking to fellow teachers and ministers. We need to guard our personal integrity and treat that very seriously. This is especially important for those of us who defend the faith and build the case for Christianity, people who are public advocates for the faith. God is going to judge us more harshly. We are going to answer to God for everything that we do, we read in 1 Timothy chapter 4 that we need to guard not only our doctrine and what we teach, but our lives, our conduct as well. Paul told the Ephesians to live a life worthy of the calling. So don't ever get into a spot in your ministry where you don't have any real accountability. RZIM hired an independent group to look into the allegations and discover the full truth. I'm really proud that they have released not only their official statement, but the full unedited report and I really encourage you to read both of those things. I'll drop links in the description below so you can read those for yourself. Remember that student that I told you about? Her question was, if someone like Ravi couldn't stand firm to the end, how can any of us do that? But knowing the Bible intellectually is different from living out the teachings of Jesus in your everyday life. That is an act of the will. We need the Holy Spirit to enable us to live and to love more like Jesus did every day. 
I'm your apologetic Scott McHale. Thanks for listening to this. And until next time, keep the faith.